Hello everyone, this is Dr. Peter Entevi, another edition of the Hentevi Minute. This is something really exciting I want to talk about, which is a case of a five-year-old seizure. Some recent data has been published to suggest that we may have a different algorithm for treating a child with a seizure. So here's my question. You arrive on scene, five-year-old is having a seizure, SATs are 85%, what do you do first? Well, of course, it's open up the airway with your two hands, throw on some oxygen. What would you do next? Would you A, check a blood sugar, or B, give a dose of a benzodiazepine? Let's discuss that. And so while you're thinking of your answer, let's talk about this data that just came out. This is from Kate Remick and Marianne Gachet Hill at Harvard UCLA. They essentially looked at all the pediatric seizure patients over a one year period that were brought in by EMS. And so there were 770 pediatric seizure patients in total. And it turns out that of those 770, 84 of those, about 14%, were actively seizing upon arrival of EMS. And so of those patients, how many were actually hypoglycemic? It may surprise you that the answer was only four. So this is only 0.5% of the total number of patients who were seizing actually had a low blood sugar. Now that's a very small number, right? In 2005, another study looked at about 6,000 patients, also found a very similar number of about 0.8%. And so we're looking at the total number of patients who are actively seizing and you may run on, the total number of children who actually may hypoglycemic due to those, that as a cause of those seizures, may be very low. And that's a very important part of what we're about to discuss. And so I'm really excited to talk about Kate Remix and Marianne Gachet Hill's paper because it's a very nice algorithm to consider. So if you walk up to a child actively seizing, first thing you do, open airway. Use your two hands, nothing else, jaw thrust, chin lift. Child's actively seizing. The first thing you do is a dose of a benzodiazepine. Most people nowadays are using midazolam, which is Versed, IM or IN. In these two routes, you can go at a dose of 0.2 milligrams per kilogram. And so first thing you do, actively seizing, is not check a blood sugar. It's actually give a dose of benzo. If the child's not seizing, here's the interesting part. If the GCS is 15, they're saying no blood sugar at all, which is very interesting. Okay, now, if you've given the midazolam already, now the next step after midazolam, now you check a blood sugar. If the GCS was not 15 and they're a little altered, then you check a blood sugar. Now, once you check a blood sugar, if it's normal, and in this study they're looking at over 60 is normal, then you repeat midazolam if they're still seizing. If the blood sugar is less than 60, here's where you give dextrose. And of course, you can use D10 cradle to grave. You can also use, per your protocol, D10, D25, or D50. Again, that's important here that you check a blood sugar after the, the benzo, and you can repeat the midazolam if the blood sugar is normal, or you actually give dextrose if the blood sugar is low. Again, this is going to be very few patients that are going to come along this route right here. Most patients are going to require midazolam and stop, or they'll need a repeat dose of midazolam. So, great information from the folks at Harvard UCLA. Remember, use your hands first, give a benzo second, check a blood sugar. Depending on what the blood sugar is, you'll either repeat or you'll give dextrose. And interestingly, if the patient looks perfectly fine and back to baseline, they're recommending not to do a blood sugar, and I agree with that. Again, Dr. Peter Antevi for another edition of the Hentevi Minute. Thank you.